Hello and welcome to our DMARC series. In this video, we are going to talk about SPF and DMARC. My name is Shazad Mirz, I'm the Director of Operations for Global Cyber Alliance. So what we're specifically going to talk about is try to answer that question, which we, can, we consistently get, is I have SPF, SPF, do I really need to have DMARC? And the answer is yes, but you, don't, you also do need to have SPF as well because DMARC has to use SPF. So just as a reminder, at this point, you should know what sender policy framework or SPF is. And what it is, it's used to define which mail servers are authorized to send mail on behalf of your organization. So this is, could be just your internal mail servers, but this could also be systems that are outside of your, your uh, network. So these could be your third party systems um, that you are aware of or may not even be aware of as well. But there are going to be third party, third party systems which someone has signed up to be able to send mail on your behalf. Now, SPF is a good thing and it's something that you do need to implement, but it does have some shortfalls because one item is, is that there's no mechanism to figure out if that message was being rejected or bounced. Yes, it has the dash all option, which is meant to be a hard fail or a tilde all, which is soft fail, but there's still nothing within the sender policy framework that actually says that this is what needs to happen to the message if it fails and if it's not and if, or if the message is coming from something a domain that's not on the list what needs the way it would work is is that the recipient will need to figure out how to do this and what they whether they should block or not block that particular message and so that's where it becomes a lot very difficult for them to do because they could potentially block legitimate mail so they most part, for the most part, will not implement the SPF verification alone on its, on its end. The other thing you need to look at and consider is, is that if you're using SPF by itself, any other domain using that same hosting cloud provider could now forge mail of the, the mail of, that, of these domains. Because there's nothing there that's saying that they can't use any other domain within that, within that same server. So this is where DMARC would come into play and along with DKIM as well to, that provides those missing mechanisms. So now I'm telling you how this is, but now let's actually take a look. Let's see if this actually does, if, if that's the case and if a message can be sent by using some other means, if you just have SPF. So what I'm showing you here is, is that we have GoDaddy and inside of GoDaddy, you can see that we have our SPF policy or SPF created. So here's our DNS record. So we have it so to say that just outlook that spf.protection.outlook.com dash all. So that means that only outlook.com, any servers are allowed to send mail on behalf of gotdmark.org. Other if that's not on this list, it should not be sending it in any way. So what I did was that I said, okay, well, we have our Outlook. Here's our mailbox for uh, gotdmark.org. But then I went ahead and signed up for MailChimp and signed up for uh, uh, gotdmark.org on here as well. So what we can do here is we can go ahead and send out messages. Now that I've signed up for it, I've already authenticated myself and did everything that needed to be done. But just realize that there's nothing that in the SPF record that says that MailChimp is allowed to send messages on our behalf. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to take one that's already created. So I'll just take this test campaign right here. And I'm going I'm going to take the test campaign and I'm going to go ahead and send it off. So I'm going to replicate this. Same exact campaign. So it's going to go to some three, it's only going to go to three recipients. I don't want to go ahead and go spamming a bunch of recipients at the same time. So it's going to be three customers to be, it created a Gmail account, a Yahoo account, and an Outlook.com account. So those are the people that we're going to be sending it to. Here I'm defining who it's coming from. So it's going to be coming from me, and this is the email address it's supposed to come from, smears at gotdmark.org. Subject just saying reaching out to get to say hello and it's just going to basically promote our free webinars that, that we have. So at this point now, I'm just going to go ahead and click send. Obviously, MailChimp is going to confirm, make sure you want, you want to send this out to three subscribers. And yes, I do. I'm going to send it now. So now at this point, the campaign is sent out. The email messages are going out. And at some point, they'll be received by each of those domains. So currently, it's at this point still sending. So now... 
if SPF is supposed to work the way it is, then none of these customers should receive that message. So let's take a look. Did they re actually receive their messages in the inbox? So let's take a look at Gmail. Hasn't received it quite yet. Let's take a look at Yahoo. Nothing here yet. And let's take a look at the inbox here. So we don't, see, there's a the message right there. So Outlook was the first one to give it. So the message actually went through. So if I click on the message, you'll see it's coming from me. It's coming and it's using smirzak.dmart.org. Yes, granted that it's actually being sent by the, and sent on behalf of MailChimp. So if we go to the Gmail one, so because it received here, so here it actually says that it's coming from smirzak.dmark.org via mail248.suw101.mcdlv.net, which is the MailChimp servers. So that still is, the MailChimp servers are still sending on behalf of smirzak.dmark.org. So they're still allowed to use it, but SPF says that nobody else should be using .dmark.org because it's only supposed to be the Outlook systems. So that's what the email and the message said, or the uh, SPF record said. So as you can see here now, we also received it on Yahoo as well. So that's a level of concern because, I mean, if SPF is supposed to work the way it's intended, MailChimp should never have been able to send this message out in any way. But however, it was able to do so. So what can we do now? So, I mean, it seems like at the consumer side, they don't have a level of protection. There's no way of saying that, well, if SPF doesn't match the, the gotdmark.org domain, then it shouldn't be sent. Because right now it is still getting through. There is a level of authentication with SPF and DKIM because MailChimp does support both of those and they have their own records. So they're using their own policies. So this is why message was, messages were still able to get through. Uh, but it should only be coming from whatever is on the SPF list. So what are some of the next steps? So one thing is, let me show you, like say, you know, this is something that was actually not supposed to be authorized. Somebody in the marketing team decided to actually go ahead and implement it. So now at this point here, I'm going to say, okay, you know what? Being in the IT department, I'm going to go with DMARC. And I'm pretty sure that there are no other third party systems that actually use uh, our domain. So I'm just going to create a DMARC record. I'm going to create the DMARC record at quarantine at this point. So I'll put in V equals DMARC1. And the only reason I'm putting in, in a quarantine is so that way I can actually show you what is going on rather than you know saying it's at reject and then having you think that it's actually working the way it's supposed to work. So I'm going to send any reports because reporting I believe is extremely important. So I want, even though we're just showing you this as a demo, we still want to, we still want to get reports. So I'm going to send this to my email account at dmark.dmark.org. I'm going to also send forensic reports. So I'm going to put in mail to colon. And I'm just going to say that the forensic report should be generated at any point in time. So again, so now this is at quarantine. So we're going with quarantine just to see how it works. So that way you can see that if it's, so now at this point with the way it should work is that DMARC will only, based on DMARC is going to put the strict rules in, in terms of what happened with that message. So we're saying quarantine is with the policy level. So that means that if it's if it's not on the SPF list and there's no DKIM for that particular record, that those messages should go to quarantine. So at this point, now that the record exists, let's go ahead and try to send out another campaign. So we'll replicate this again. So using the same exact one, sending it to the same three recipients, exact same setup, nothing is different at this point. So we'll just click on send. And now we're going to send those emails out to each of those users. So again, now what's going on is, is that if with DMARC, now you're doing that high level of enforcement and quarantine. You're making sure that SPF is actually working the way it's supposed to work. And DKIM is also working the way it's supposed to work. Because now you, as the domain owner, is dictating what happens with any messages that were to fail or to pass these authentication mechanisms. So that's what DMARC is supplying to you. It's giving you that level of conformance at this point. So now let's take a look here. So this was the original one. So now if you go to our junk folder, you see now 
Here's the one that's coming from MailChimp, but it was identified as spam because it's not coming from it because it's not one of the messages or it's not from the coming from a server that's on your sender policy framework. And on top of that, it's also not using DKIM that's authorized for your domain. So that's where the, the issue lies and that's where the problem is going to be. So now here, if we go down, we go to the spam folder, there will eventually be a message right here in Yahoo. And again, at some point, here's the message that's coming into Yahoo. So this message is now going into spam at, at, at this point in time. So now how do we prevent that from happening? Because we now say, okay, well, the marketing team is starting to get an email saying, hey, all your messages are going to quarantine or say we actually did go to reject. So at this point now, if we go to reject, these messages wouldn't be delivered at all. And people would say, hey, we never got your newsletter or we never got any of the uh, emails that you're, you're supposed to be sending to us. And it's because the marketing team or the sales team didn't talk to the IT staff and set up the authorized system. So at this point, what you would have to do is now go into MailChimp, set that up and configure it in order to set it up correctly and allow for these messages to go through.